One of the fourth, the fourth thing I want to share with you is conversations about sin. Does anybody else notice inside of the church, especially in our culture, I'm a Gen Xer, it's become kind of scary and out of vogue for us to talk about sin. And we live in a world, man, where the lines between what is sin and what is not sin seem to be blurred. We're desperately trying to navigate around scripture that offends people. But in Romans chapter 8, we read this simple, and I believe one of the most self-identifying true statements in the Bible. For the wages of sin is death. Three years ago, I was working with a group of guys in Nashville, Tennessee. We were up in the mountains of an incredible ministry, hanging out and meeting. And as we're sitting there in this lodge where we had no cell phone signal, no internet service or Wi-Fi, I saw a car that was peeling up a dirt road. I didn't recognize the guy who got out of the car, but he came briskly inside to our meeting and he said, is Matt Roberts here? You can imagine that as a husband and a father of four boys, my heart began to skip a beat. Why is this man here asking for me? He said, your wife's been trying to get a hold of you all day. I need you to get in the car with me and go back into town so that she can talk to you. Longest 15-minute ride of my life. When we finally got to cell phone service, I talked to my wife. 38 years old, she said, Matt, I've been diagnosed with cancer. It's not good. I need you to get home, and I need you to be here. I got on a plane within an hour, and the moment I got home, I held my wife in my arms, and I said, honey, we're going to find somebody. We're going to find some way that we're going to attack this, and we're going to overcome the very thing that is killing you. The next morning, we went to an oncologist's office, and let me promise you that day, I was not looking for a doctor who was going to beat around the bush and tell us everything was going to be okay. I wasn't looking for a doctor to be my friend and try not to offend me. I wasn't looking for a doctor who was going to soft sell a prognosis to me. Give it to me like it is and tell me what we have to do in order to get rid of it. Now, I can tell you today, three years later, that my wife beat that fight and she is cancer free and in full remission today. And it's because we surrounded ourselves with people who loved us enough to be honest and truthful about the things that are killing us. And I believe that the most loving conversations we can have in our world are conversations about sin. Conversations about the things that are killing our society. We see it all around us. But let me tell you that sometimes churches want to skip through running into the mess. We want to skip through listening to stories. We want to run straight through cultivating healthy community, and we want to get right to the sin conversation. When I was lost in my own sin, I didn't need somebody to show up with a sign telling me that I was going to burn in hell for eternity. I needed someone to love me enough to care and walk me from where I was at to the very feet of Jesus. And Jesus did this so well, didn't he? Remember the woman caught in the act of adultery? Jesus stood with her when no one else was willing to stand with her. He ran into her mess. He stooped down in the dirt that day. That's what the Bible tells us. And I love that. My, my guess is, people always talk about what was Jesus drawing in the sand. I don't know what he's drawing in the sand, but this is what I love. Jesus said, all of these men are standing looking at her. She's laying in the dirt. I'm with her. I'm down here. This is where I'm at. This is why I came. But at the end of that, he didn't say, all right, you're good, go. He said, go and sin no more. Go and live something different than this. Go and live a better story. And a better story is always when we allow Jesus not just to forgive us of our sins, but to call us in a much better direction as we bravely live in his calling, in his direction. To deal with bravely and ruthlessly with sin. And I can tell you, I have the privilege of pastoring people in my church who come from a lot of broken places. We always joke around at the Genesis Project, we have more tattoos than we have teeth. <laughs> and if you're a part of my church, if you and I sit down over a cup of coffee at our coffee shop and I lead that conversation with, you know I love you, right? <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> but when I say, you know I love you, I'm saying that because you know I've been there for you. You know I've kicked in the doors of the crack houses and dragged you out by the scruff of your neck. 
You know I've sat with you when you had nothing. You know that we paid that rent for you when you were getting ready to lose your house and you and your kids were going to be homeless. But all of that has earned me the right to sit down with you right now and say it's time to live the better that Jesus died so that you might have. Getting honest about the things that are killing us is not something we should avoid. It's actually one of the most loving and gracious things that we could ever do. 